Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're going to see how to generate a data set by capturing the images from a live video. So let's get this started. Okay, so this video is actually an extension of the previous video that we had created in the face recognition series. So it was a video on identifying faces using OpenCV. So I highly suggest you to see that video first, because if you don't see that, you'll not be able to understand how we are going to detect the faces inside this video. So check that out once and once you're done with that, then you can carry on from here. So this is the project that we had in the previous video. So we have the identify underscore video, which is going to identify the faces inside the video. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to delete the identify.py. We don't need that. And also remove the images folder. We don't need that as well. So apart from this, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create another folder called as dataset. So inside this dataset folder, we are going to programmatically create a folder with the name of the user and also save his images inside that particular folder. Okay, so I'm just going to change the name for this file as well. So let's give it as generate dataset. Okay, so this is the code that we had written in the previous video. So the first thing that you have to do is that you have to get the user input. That is, you have to take the ID and the name of the person whose face you're going to enter. So I'm just going to print a statement saying So the statement says enter the ID and name of the person. So below this, I'm going to write two input statements to get those two input values. So the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm just going to save this original image inside another variable. So I'm going to give it a name as original image is equal to IMG. So the reason why we are doing this, I'll explain later on, but for now we are just going to assign it to this variable. So in the previous video, what we did is that we took the image from the video capture and we converted it into a grayscale image. Then we place that inside the detect multiscale function to get the location of the faces. Then we use those values inside faces to draw a rectangle on the image. Then later we showed that to the user itself. So at the end, what we did is that we wrote a condition saying that if the user presses Q, then we have to break out of the loop. So instead of doing that now, what we do is that I'm going to write a condition, an if condition saying that if the user presses S on the keyboard, then we have to save that print. Or if the user presses Q on the keyboard, then we have to break out of the loop. And also another condition saying that if the user clicks S five times, that is five images have been saved, then automatically we have to exit out of the loop. So the condition is something like this. So what I have given here is that I'm waiting for the user to press a key and once the user presses that key, I'm going to store that value inside a variable called as key. Then later I'm checking if the user pressed the key is equal to s. If it is equal to s, I'm going to initialize a method to save the image. So the method is going to be save image and for this I'm going to pass in four parameters. Those are so I'm going to pass in the original image as the first parameter. And that is because I don't want to save the image where the rectangle is drawn on the face. I want to save the image where there is no rectangle. So that's why previously we had saved that original image inside a variable called as original image. So I'm just going to pass it here. And also along with this, I'm going to pass in the username and the user ID. Along with this, we also have another value called as count. So initially what we're going to do is that I'm going to place the count as one. That is because we are going to use this count variable to see how many number of images that we had saved. So each time the user presses S, we are going to increment the count by one. So I'm going to type that here. So when the user presses S on the keyboard, I'm going to initialize a method and pass these values. And also once the image has been saved, I'm just going to increment the count. So what we have to do is that we have to first write the method for this. So I'm going to write the method here. So 
So for this method, I'm going to take those values from here and assign to a variable called as img, username, user ID and image ID. So I'm going to take the count as the image ID. Okay. So inside this method, what we're going to do is that first, we're going to create a directory or a folder inside our dataset folder with the name of the user. So for this, we have to have a library imported first. So the library is from path lib import path. So this is by default present inside Python. You don't need to install it once again. So now inside this method, I'm going to use the path and create a directory. So for this path method, we're going to pass in the location or the path where we have to save it. So I have to save that inside a folder called as dataset. And inside that folder, I want to create another folder called as Kamal. So I'm going to give it as brackets and then use the format method to give the username. So I'm going to pass the username here. And since we don't have the folder called as username and we want to create that, I'm going to use a method present inside path called as mkdir and that is going to create a folder. So for this, we have to pass in two values. Those are The first one is going to be parents is equal to true and the second one is going to be exist ok which is also equal to true. So what these two parameters do is that the parents parameter deals with the names of the folder present inside the path. Right now this path that you're using is a relative path but let's say you're using the whole path like c slash user slash your username slash desktop and all that. So when you're using the full path and you forgot to add a particular folder let's say desktop inside that. And what happens is that when you're trying to save that image, you forgot that folder name, right? So the program doesn't know where it has to save it. So if you give parents as true, what it's going to do is that it's going to automatically add that folder inside the full path. So you don't need to worry about generating errors because you didn't give the full path or you gave the wrong path in a sense. So that's what parents deals with. Whereas exist OK is going to check whether the folder that you're trying to create is already present inside the dataset folder. If it is present, it's going to ignore it and try to save the files or the images. But if you give it as false, it's going to generate an error saying that the folder already exists and you have to create another folder. So if you want to know more about these two values, you can go to the GitHub repository where this code is uploaded. And in the readme section in the FAQ, you will see the details regarding what happens if you set that to true or if you set that to false. So you can read that and try to implement it. Okay, so now that you have created the path, you have to save the image. So I'm going to use a method inside CV2 called as I am right, which is going to write the image into the folder. So for this, we have to first pass in the path where you want to save it. So I'm going to save it inside data set. And inside data set, we had already created a folder and the folder name is Kamal. So I'm going to do that. And inside that particular folder, I want to place the file and the naming sense that I'm going to use is user ID underscore image id dot jpg. So I'm going to give that first. And also along with this, you have to pass the image at the last. So this line is actually equivalent to this. So I'm going to pass in the username, user id and image id in these three positions. So this is going to save the image inside the dataset folder. So now if you try to execute it, what happens is that this is going to be stuck inside a loop. And as long as the user presses S, it's going to keep on saving the image. And if you press on Q, it's going to exit out. But it's not going to say that five images have been stored. So you have to exit out of it. So if you want that to happen, what you have to do is that inside the if condition, you have to create another if condition checking whether the count is less than or equal to five. And if that is true, then you have to first save the image, then you have to increment the image. But let's say the count has exceeded 5, what you have to do is that you have to break out of the loop. So what this logic is saying is that when you try to execute this for the first time, what happens is that it's going to first see if the user tries to press S. If the user presses S, what happens is that it's going to check if the count value is less than or equal to 5. And currently the value of count is equal to one. So it is less than five. Then it's going to go and save the image. Then later it's going to increment the count value by one. 
and this is going to keep on repeating unless and until the value of count exceeds 5. When that happens, it's going to exit out of the loop. Or if the user manually presses Q, it's also going to exit out of the loop. So now if you execute this, So we have to enter the ID and name of the person. I'm going to give it as one and the name is going to be Kamal. So that is going to display the window, but right now you won't be able to see any output because I don't have a webcam with me. But when the window opens and your face is being detected, if you press on S, it's going to save that image inside the dataset folder. And it's going to keep on doing that unless and until it reaches five images. Once that happens, it's going to automatically exit. Or if you press on Q, then it's just going to stop it and exit out of the loop. So that's how you generate a personal data set consisting of images taken from a live video. And in the upcoming videos, we can use this data set to train a model which is going to identify and distinguish between two different people. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you like what I've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.